Well, thanks for staying with us on the program this morning. A lot of commendations has come in for the electoral umpire, INEC, but also for the Nigerian police force who made several arrests in the conduct of the elections to ensure that there was no voter intimidation and no record of violence in the elections. Now we have a result as announced by INEC, but let's also make to accommodate a man who almost seems like a political octopus who had predicted that the APC had quite the better standing owing to a fracture alongst the governorship uh, uh, support for the PDP candidate in the elections. Now joining us in our studios this morning is uh, Comrade Richard Romanus. Good morning to you and welcome to the program. Good morning, Bito. Good morning, my brother. It's good to be here. Well, it's good to have you back <laughs> in the studio and I can see you laughing already about uh, the outcome of the result. Of well, course. congratulations to uh, the APC candidate, uh, Senator Mondi Okwebolo, and also congratulations to you. Kudos to you for rightly predicting the APC as the winner of the election. <laughs> well, um, I should just say thank you. Uh, I <laughs> well, mean, thank you. Is just <laughs> I mean, uh, for me, nothing unusual actually happened. I had always known that um, that the result we had in the do was what was going to actually be. Yes. Yeah. And now people are looking at it from the angle of federal might. The number three citizen, APC, uh, APC senators almost spent the entire weekend, despite having concluded the campaigns and rally in Edo State until the result was announced yesterday before a lot of them are looking to depart Bini City. Do you think that this solidarity quite largely influenced the choices of the voters at the poll, or is it uh, 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 a testament to the people's belief in which political ideology would help the Bini people achieve the Edo of their dream? Well, not at all. Uh, what I, I basically think about um, what the likes of uh, the Senate President and the few others were doing in Edo is more or less what um, the Adamawa State Governor, uh, Maru Finitri, yes. um, the Governor of uh, Plateau. Uh, Kalebufuan? No, not, um, not Plateau, Taraba. Taraba. What's his name? Uh, the Governor of Taraba. Yes. Yeah. And then um, what's, what's the other Governor's name? I think there were three. In, um, what they what they were there, what the Senate President and his colleagues were there to do is exactly the same thing. The PDP guy, the PDP governor, uh, governors were also there to do. Basically, um, in solidarity, you know, with their various um, parties, you know. But uh, sincerely, I see nothing like federal might in those elections. You know, um, w what I what. For me, my thoughts about that election is, uh, let me use an, an illustration. If you have ever been to, um, if you have ever been to uh, where the where a butcher, you know, where you see a butcher, you know, like an using, abattoir, like an abattoir, you know, butchering whatsoever he has on his on his uh, uh, this thing, whether cow, good. That was exactly what happened in uh, in um, in Edo. Politicians in Edo. You know, saw Saturday, the 21st of September, yeah? Yes. As an opportunity to take their pound of flesh from Governor Godwin or Basiki. You know, so like a, like a butcher, they placed Obasiki on this, uh, this thing, and everybody was just taking their own part of everybody was as taking a form of revenge. As a form of revenge. That was basically what happened in those states. Let me tell you, politics. The last time I was here, I told you politics is local. If you like, be one of the biggest politicians in your state. On the day of election, eh, you relocate back to your village, back to your ward, back to your local government. Do you get? Yes. What happens in the next person local government? What happens in Chijoke's local government? What happens in Bito's local government is no, no longer your business. What is important is your local government. What and is important word. is your word. Deliver from your word first and your local government. Do you understand? Now, <clears throat> in those state, the people who have what it takes to deliver this local government, where, where, who were there with, is the question. Who were there with? This man, the governor of those state, like I said, carried on in the last four years as if he was never going to need anybody's support to put in a successor. 
I mean, not 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 even the leaders of the PDP. Not even the him. leaders of the PDP were with him. The people he was supposed he he's supposed to make friends and allies. He made fools. He made enemies. You can imagine that you went into primaries. Somehow you were able to get um, a good man. Yeah, that's why Godalo is a good man. You got a good a Godalo to be the governorship uh, flag bearer. All you needed to do was appease other um, other aspirants, including your deputy. He has the right to contest. But what did he do? What did he do? He fought him. He fought him and impeached him. As if it doesn't matter. And now, and now, from the footage that we saw of uh, the visit of the Senate President alongside Adam Sushomale, uh, Monday, uh, it, it got, uh, Monday Okwebolo, and you know other APC stalwarts, uh, Philip Schwab was, you know, present there, and it, it appears as if he he might have a rethink about uh, his let, let, uh, his movement let, to the APC. Let me tell you, I have the last time I was here, I told you guys that. You can take every other thing away from Philip Shaibu. Philip Shaibu is a politician. And again, you see this thing called politics. Most people take politics as their profession. Politics is literally their profession. They wake up, talk politics. They, I mean, everything they do, they sleep and eat politics. And the likes of Philip Shaibu are in that category. category yeah. You know, hence... Whatsoever they do, whatsoever uh, um, political calculation, whatsoever permutations, you know, the whole, you know, will always, always, almost come through, you know. And that was exactly what happened in that election, that, 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 that time. Now, one of, the, one of the things I have noticed again in politics is that people, if you, you come from a community, you come from a world, People will always rally around one of their sons, one of their daughters, who seem to be very close to the source. Yes. Do you get? So that it is believed that if they support that their son, it is that their son, since he is the one that is close, you that will bring it will that, trickle down that, to uh, them. Exactly. Exactly. So, very often, it is not about whether you have done one project there or done one project there. Those projects will not speak for themselves. It is the people in that place where you, where that project is that will say it is our government that did this. So if it is, so a situation where you don't have those kind of people in those places, who speaks for you? Certainly no one. Certainly nobody. So in this case, that was exactly. See, sincerely, I don't even believe that that election was rigged. Now, now let's talk about some of the reactions whilst the results were being collated. Now, out of 18 local governments, a majority of those local governments, 11, were won by the APC, 7 by Asue Godalo, and none by Apata. But whilst those results were being collated, we saw attempts by the sitting governor, Gorino Basike, who will take a listen to his comments he made shortly again. Uh, he made an attempt to approach INEC's office while the collation was going, but for the intervention of INEC officials who barred him from gaining entrance there, it almost felt as though people were asking why a governor in that capacity would approach a coalition center. Did this action make any sense to you? It doesn't, actually. Why would it make sense to me? What was he supposed to... What business does he have there? What business does he have there? All he's supposed to do is sit back where um, the... Uh, what's it called? The uh, money... Where the money... Where... Uh, is it a situation room? Yes. That is where he's supposed the to PDP be. The PDP situation room. The PDP situation room. That is where he's supposed to be. You know, I mean, for me, if you ask me, what um, the that thing he did was him trying to use his um, his power as the a sitting governor, you know, to to possibly want to intimidate, you know, the or elect, manipulate uh, the or, or, or manipulate the the result, yeah. you know. So for me, I see no reason why he took himself to the collation center. There was absolutely no need for him to go there. Absolutely no need. Now, let's also get your thoughts on his statement. We had listened to it earlier whilst uh, reviewing some of the outcomes of the election. We'll once again take a listen to Governor Godwin Obaseke and his call to supporters of the PDP in line with the results as released. He's urging them to remain calm and not resort to violence. Let's take a listen to those comments again and then we'll get the thoughts of Comrade Richard as well as your opinions on his statement. 
My dear good people of Edo State, in the last few months, the various political parties have embarked on very rigorous campaigns to sell their respective candidates for the office of governor to the people of Edo State in an exercise which came to a climax yesterday. The attractive thing about democracy is the power it bestows on the people to choose who governs them. Therefore, when this power is blatantly seized from the people, it's not just a tragedy, but a travesty of democracy. Regrettably, the outcome of the September 21st governorship election appears to have daunted the spirit of many Edo people who feel powerless in the face of the brute force of the institutions that are supposed to protect them. It is therefore understandable that many people feel sad and aggrieved. But in the midst of this despair, I'm urging all my fellow Edo citizens to maintain calm and not resort to violence and the destruction of property in spite of this provocation. Peace and justice will always win at the end. And this is my prescription to all the good people of Edo State who feel vexed and violated at this time. Clearly, it is obvious to the least discerning the amount of impunity and reckless disregard for processes and law that was displayed in this gubernatorial election. In a democracy, there are always safeguards for addressing grievances, and we hope that all those affected will seek resolution for this blatant disregard of law and process. With this in mind, I implore all Edo people to go about their lawful businesses and rest assured of the commitment of our government to your well-being and security. God bless the people of Edo State. God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Now, Governor Godwin Obaseke is citing the safeguards for our grieved political actors to vent their aggrieved perceptions of the results and many would think he's insinuating that they will be heading to the tribunals to express their grievances. It almost feels like a, a characteristics of the Nigerian elections, post-election tribunal matters. Do you see the PDP taking that line in this regard? Of course. Of course. Of course. Um, I'll be very surprised if they don't go to court. They will always... Um, in Nigeria, I have noticed that um, nobody actually believes he, he or she has lost in an election until, you know, what gives them that confidence about the court is that they always believe that um, they can possibly maneuver their way, you know, and um, get, um, get uh, a, a, favorable a, a favorable judgment, judgment you know, in court. So I'll be very surprised if PDP does not go to, to, to court. But, but going to court when people cite the instance that he lost in his own local government area among some of the three local governments which the PDP are calling for a rerun in, uh, how much does that speak to uh, the way the people in Edo State perceived the state under the last administration of the PDP? Maybe, if you ask me, it is basically going to be a face-saving um, uh, move, you know. Uh, if you ask me, the thing is that Obasiki, Governor Godwin Obasiki, what happened to him today, you know, was basically his creation. He called him for himself, you know. Um, if he was able to manage certain people, manage certain Particularly tendencies, his deputy. Particularly his deputy. Uh, Governor Obasiki had issues with both politicians within and outside his state. You know, and just like the analogy I gave to you guys here, it, it was that day was the day Where politicians ganged up and everybody had to get extract their pound of flesh, you know, from him. I, I mean, some statements uh, were made by the uh, president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Bola Betinubu, as well as the president of the Senate, following uh, the declaration of uh, Monday Okwebalo as winner of the elections and. You know, they unanimously said that anybody who is insatisfied with the outcome of the election can go to court. Is this a dare or is this just um, a statement of, well, 
you can do the same thing that you've been doing to <laughs> uh, or, or the same thing you've been doing to others is now being done to you is that the situation we're looking at well i think uh, i think um of course what else were they supposed to tell them the court is the only way is the only place they can advise people like obasiki and co to go, to, go to, to you know so for me um uh i will also join in saying let them go to Cops. let them go to god if they are not um if they are not um, uh, comfortable with uh, the result, you know. But I also read somewhere where somebody said, or the president said, it is also um, the result is also the um, reflection. A, a reflection of uh, Nigerian susceptibility. Well, uh, I don't think I agree with that. You know, the election in the two state, you know, is a completely a complete ball game entirely. You know, um, I don't think. Um, um, that is completely it. Uh, while I will not want to go further with that, but I just think that uh, in those states, that election was quite a unique election. It was an election that was, um, uh, it was some kind of a vendetta. If, if some politicians had their personal animosity against the outgoing governor of uh, those state, Governor Basiki. So it was an opportunity for them to vent it. Well, time, I'm afraid, is up, but we just want an answer from you on a scale of 0 to 10. Noting that this election was peaceful, how would you rate INEX's performance? Um, <laughs> on a six. scale of what? <laughs> six. Well, he says six. We don't know what your rating is, but do want to let us know your rating of INEX performance in this off-second election. Remember, there's still one more to come on those states. November, come November... Again, we'll be looking at INEC in line with the performance of voters and the said improvements in the lack of violence in this election.